resin going all over, TPU printing that's just not going all that well, and a continued update to my Bamboo Lab saga, which has me at a bit of a crossroads. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 104. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and hey, if you're new here, and even if you're not, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed if you aren't. It doesn't cost you a dime and it helps the channel grow. We would love to help you with your 3D prints and it will cost you nothing to get that assistance. All you have to do is reach out to us. You can DM us on all the social media platforms or you can email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. You can also send us posts on those social media platforms. You can use the hashtag print fix and we should be able to find it pretty rapidly. We have got some interesting failures today and some cool fixes for them, including one all about toxic resin and why you shouldn't shake it unless you know it's secure. And of course, an update to my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which did not go the way that I was expecting, to be honest with you guys. But before we jump into it, let's hear from today's sponsor, 3D Musketeers. Hey, thanks for sticking around for the sponsor segue. We use these to kind of update you guys, the ones that don't want to click through them. We are going to be changing our content schedule coming up in October, where we're going to be doing Wednesday videos every other week. And those off weeks, I will be streaming, assuming I'm not traveling or something like that. So we're going to be doing some awesome builds coming up in October and moving forward. So stay tuned. We're going to be making a huge investment into live streaming content more printer unboxings, reviews, printer builds, including, yes, the Trident is coming. I am so excited to do that Trident. If you guys are excited, make sure to let me know in those comments down below. But I do need your help. We are looking to bring out merch. We have some really awesome ideas. And in fact, the enamel pins are already in production. We have our first ones coming out of production relatively soon, and we're working on some other designs. So if you like enamel pins, make sure to stay tuned because you'll be seeing those very soon. But we are looking to do t-shirts, and I am trying to find a company that we can work with. Local to Florida would be great, but hey, it's not all that necessary. We would like to find a company that can do either short runs for us and handle packing and shipping, or do printing on order for the shirts. I don't have a lot of space here to hold inventory, so we're looking to do small batch work when and where we can. If you know somebody or you have some sort of contact, please feel free to send those to me directly. If you do put them in the comments, you can't use links, so just put the name of the company and I can do my best to research for it. But if you happen to know the company personally, please have them reach out to me or email me their information. I would love to build a relationship with a small business that can help us grow ours at the same time. We have some really awesome designs and I think you guys are going to like them. But anyways, enough of that. I greatly appreciate your support. But hey, let's get back into supporting the community by helping fix some print fails. First up, a fail from the Clipper Discord here. We have the Tootsie Troll who's uh, dealing with some benchy problems on their Ender 3. And yeah, you, you can run Clipper on pretty much any printer. And I'm excited because there's a lot coming soon here on the channel. Clipper is one of them. So, oh, it's exciting. We just got some skipping on our y-axis. It's not that big of a deal at the end of the day, but we're also having skipping on our x-axis. From what I can see, it looks like the x-axis is from the y-axis, so I would just be looking at the y-axis. We've also got some issues here with, well, um, pretty much every setting. We're moving too fast. When you look at taking a bed slinger, especially something like an ender, and try to turn it to 11 on the speed, you are going to have some problems if you don't make sure that you're also upgrading the motion system. Especially when it comes to enders, their motors, and specifically the drivers around them, are not providing a lot of power. And that means they'll have a tendency to skip when they run really high speeds and especially high accelerations. That's where a lot of these problems tend to occur. So I would look at upping your current on your stepper motors that should hopefully help make this a little bit more reliable and if you haven't done it already make sure that you remove the adjustment wheels for the bed there is a bl touch installed on this machine so we don't have to worry too much about bed level but i do believe generally the enders still come with them because it's a you know manufacturing ease of use but i will say 
you know? As far as failed benchies go, it's actually a pretty decent failure that still looks okay. We can look down here and see that there's absolutely some issues with our outer perimeter, which is likely somewhat to do with the ramming settings. So if you are retracting relatively fast, you want to make sure that you're de-retracting relatively slow to allow the filament enough time to heat up inside of that heat block before it goes ahead and prints. Now, another thing to be aware of is that when you start trying to print fast, you need to make sure that you're running really good parts because if you're not you're gonna run into problems and stock hot ends especially on enders are not designed to do the kind of speeds that clipper can make these machines run i would highly recommend upgrading to an all metal hot end at a bare minimum and there are a lot of options out there including ease of use ones like the e3d revo although that does come with a pretty significant cost when you compare it to the cost of an Ender 3. But there are options out there from companies like Fadus and others that have a more budget option while still giving you way better characteristics when it comes to flow and movement of material in the hot end. To me, those kind of upgrades are kind of required. Obviously, make sure your pulleys are tight against the motors because as these machines start to move faster, they're gonna vibrate more and that vibration is going to cause things to loosen up. When it comes to Clipper, it's a dangerous trip of the ship of Theseus where you're gonna upgrade so many things just to make the printer print reliably that maybe it doesn't make so much sense anymore to stick with the machine and instead get something that is better designed for it from the beginning. Why would one print look okay, but the other fails? So we've got a Prusa MK3S here and we're doing retraction tests. The first one looks fine. No issues at all. Uh, maybe some issues with speed, but I think they've just kind of canceled it a little bit early. But the second one, the second one doesn't look great. There are two schools of thought here. The first school of thought is stop chasing zeros. It's plenty fine. The likelihood of you having detail that is this small is really, really low. It is not often that you're printing really high detail FDM parts. And even this is not very high detail in the grand scheme of things. Uh, also beautiful starlight Neptune from a polymaker. Love this color uh, model soon TM. You could also chalk this up to a ton of different things. Problems like maybe your nozzle's worn out a little bit and you need to replace it. It could be the fact that you're running a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and not a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And because the filament is just basically going in and out very quickly, rather than getting enough time to get molten and extrude a little bit, it's just going to naturally have some strings. While I recognize there are ways to tune this stuff perfectly, and you can sit there and chase zeros all day, as often as you want, by all means, have fun. But me personally, I don't think this is gonna be a big deal in the grand scheme of 3D printing. And in fact, something like a blowtorch solves that problem real quick, just a quick little, you know, and the part problem is taken care of. There's not really that big of a deal, in my opinion. But if you do wanna chase zeros, there are some things you gotta do. The first, you need to print out of a dry box. Even slight amounts of moisture can start to cause stringing early on in a 3D print, and you don't want that. You know, traditionally, yeah, a blowtorch or even a heat gun would quickly solve these problems, but if you are looking to chase those zeros, you always need to print out of a dry box. You wanna make sure that you're keeping it very close to the glass transition temperature of your material. So for PLA, keep that box around 55 degrees centigrade if you can, and leave it in there for a few days before you go ahead and print. From there, you'll want a fair bit of retraction, more than you think is actually necessary because you want to make sure that you can pull it out of the hot zone fast. You'll want to retract around 75 to 85 millimeters a second. And yes, that is much faster than stock because again, we're retracting heavy. I would expect to retract around two to two and a half millimeters on a Prusa to make that kind of thing happen. From there, you'll also want to make sure that you are heavily tuning your de-retraction settings as well as as your extra restart amount, that is any extra material that is extruded post retraction. You might need a little bit of that because as the material cools down, it has a tendency to shrink a little bit and that shrinkage inside of your heat break and heat block might result in your nozzle not being perfectly primed. But if you ask me, this is not that big of a deal. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this because it is an often argued thing of 
Do we care about this or do we not? I am on the side of uh, blowtorches solve a lot of problems in life. And, you know, for an $8 can of propane and like a $30 to $40 uh, torch tip, this is a uh, Burnzomatic TS4000. And I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. I can solve all of these problems with literally that. So is it that big of a deal? It can be to some but to me, it's just not. Because quite frankly, the ambient humidity here in Florida, even with air conditioning, is so high that this, dude, I open a roll of filament and 24 hours later, it's going to show some minor signs of water uptake. It is normal. So we'd rather take care of it on the back end. So I'd love to know what you guys think down in those comments for this one. For me, it ain't that big of a deal. There are ways to deal with it, but quite frankly, it's just being picky about what an FDM printer can and can't do. Guess I officially joined the I'm a dumbass club. So we've got a poster here from the Bamboo Lab Facebook group, and this is likely a P1P or a P1S because it doesn't have LiDAR. And my assumption is P1S because it looks like the panels are all from the factory. So we'll assume P1S, but it's missing something. It's missing a build plate. And if you don't put a build plate on bamboo printers, while it theoretically will warn you if you have a printer with sensors, the P1P and P1S don't have those sensors and are unable to warn you. So what happens is uh, this, you end up breaking parts and you end up making a big blob of doom because nothing, and I mean nothing, will stick to that magnetic sheet especially stuff that you're going to be printing. I mean, of course, something will stick, but not the stuff you're likely going to be printing. So hopefully this isn't that big of a problem to solve. It should just be heat the thing up. Hopefully let that blob come off. You will have to replace that front cover because the machine will likely pause itself in the meantime if you don't. But once that is done, go ahead and heat up the printer and try to remove that blob without causing too many issues. It is one of the things I like about the bamboo hot end. It's something that has always been a gripe on the V6s is that the wires for the heater and thermistor are not just like heavily exposed. On a V6, your heater and thermistor wires come out of the side. And if you get a blob of doom that encapsulates the whole thing, it is a pain in the ass to not end up cutting your heater or your thermistor. And it's why traditionally for us, I'll cut the heater and thermistor wires. Be careful if you do that because you don't want to short the heater out because it will blow your motherboard from time to time. So don't make that mistake. Ask me how I've learned. But then we'll just take what is left at the hot end to a bench vise and torch the hell out of it to get everything off. But often uh, the replacement parts are relatively cheap. A new hot end is relatively cheap and uh, it's not always worth trying to fix. But with an X1 Carbon, P1P, P1S, or any of the new printers Bamboo Lab is coming out with, been hearing some grumblings, and I'm kind of excited. Even though, uh, as you'll see, there's more updates to my Bamboo story, and they're not good. But I do have faith in some of the new stuff that is coming out of Bamboo Lab, this new color thing that they've talked about that they've teased that's coming out on the 20th. I'm excited for that because if it is as good as the AMS is for a lot of people, that will bring multicolor printing to the masses. And that is something that the average user of 3D printing does not have access to. And well, that kind of sucks. But in this case, yeah, big blob of doom that makes big blob of doom problems. And that is an actual bamboo poop. Okay, so... um. You know how we say resin is toxic and sometimes people are like, well, it's not toxic. Well, okay, it's technically not toxic, but you know what it is? It's really bad for your skin and it's really, really bad for you. So remember, always shake your resin. I have some air make resin here. You will want one hand on the cap, one hand on the bottle, and then shake it vigorously like you are a bartender and not like it's a Polaroid picture because you shouldn't shake Polaroid pictures. If you cover it and then shake it, even if you cover it with like one hand, you'll be okay. This user though had a bit of a problem uh, because they're using a four liter jug. This is a one kilogram bottle and this one kilogram bottle is not all that heavy. Four liters of it is quite heavy. Let's read the story. Just before bed, I wanted to kick off a print for a friend. So I begrudgingly pull my vat and slowly drain and clean it. I hate that for some reason. Do people drain and clean their vats between prints? Uh, 
anyways, pour in a bit of Super HD tea, which I had to look up. It is actually like a high heat deflection resin. And they wanted to add a small bit of Soraya Tech Tenacious. So you grab your four liter jug, give it a shake, Sploosh. Sploosh. Now I'm dripping. Um, phrasing? Apparently, last time I used the resin, I didn't completely secure the lid. Likely from a previous quick mix. Tenacious, which is quite thick, clear, real stanky. Hey, phrasing! Goes flying all over me and the garage floor. Yeah, looks like a bit of a murder scene, if you ask me. But this is why... You want to wear your PPE. They were wearing gloves. They were wearing glasses. They were wearing a mask, but no coverings. Favorite gym shirt is ruined. Slowly peel the clothes off. Wipe myself down with alcohol wipes. Shower with some dish soap where it hit my forearms. Thought I would get a pick before I put them in a garbage bag. I'd put them out to cure in the backyard before trash. A quick print turned into a two hour cleanup. Fortunately, I keep some IPA in a spray bottle. I have a large portable UV lamp to cure anything I didn't get. Lesson learned, secure your shit. I was in a hurry last time. Must have forgot to get that lid on all the way. Other lesson, that would have been nastier had I not had gloves and glasses. We talk about it. I've said it and I'll say it again. Resin is toxic. This kind of thing can be bad. We've seen stories in previous Print Fix Fridays where individuals have gotten resin on their pants and not really done anything about it and it's caused their skin to melt. And while, yeah, immediately it's not going to be a huge problem, over time, your exposure to resins, no matter who they're made by, will cause skin irritation and eventually allergic reactions that you don't want to deal with, especially if you live in America, because healthcare is expensive. And do you really want to afford a trip to the ER? This person did everything right post problem. A lot of issues up until the spill, and they're very clear about it. They weren't wearing a covering. We are going to be working on this kind of thing. So stay tuned because lab coats are coming soon and oh yeah if you missed the sponsor segment we're looking for companies to do screen printing for us so if you know anybody would love to work with a local company in florida would be great but you know somewhere in the united states would be fine that will do print on demand or some level thereabouts please have them reach out to me youtube at 3dmusketeers.com or send me their contact information because we're looking to do some clothing so yeah the clothing is ruined there is no good way to get resin out of clothes because you have to cure it before you can do anything about it because if you try to throw it in the washing machine and wash it you now have dangerous resin going down the drain resin go down the hole so you want to be careful about it and this is a great case where you need to wear your ppe and i know that it's a pain in the ass and no one wants to put lab coats on you don't want to put chemical gloves on glasses and a face shield and you know a, a, a hair covering that's all a pain in the ass but the one time past you screws current you you're gonna be thankful that you go through all that extra effort and you know the worst part about this is tenacious is stupid expensive so this is not only like they've lost a, a, a their favorite gym shirt they've also lost a good pair of jeans but they've also lost a bunch of resin that's really expensive that sucks but this is why understanding protocol for cleaning resin is incredibly valuable next up a fail from the maker deck discord submitted by ice chess who had some fun with tpu for those that haven't been uh introduced the world of printing in wet spaghetti welcome to tpu it hates you and you will hate it too. TPU is an absolutely terrible material to print with. You are literally pushing a rope and printers that are bowed and will uniquely struggle with printing TPU. Now, there are good ways to print it. We find that TPU loves to be dry. We always put TPU in a dry box at least 24 hours before we need to print it. And we print hot. Hotter than what Prusa thinks. The stock Prusa profile, last I checked, was around 230 degrees centigrade for TPU. We print around 240, 245, and when it's dry, it prints beautifully. But if you are getting TPU that tends to bunch up on your extruder like this, 
chances are your TPU might actually be wet. See, the problem is with TPU, it's not very easy to determine when it is wet or when it is dry because it is always stringy. It is always becoming a problem. TPU just overall sucks to print. And I know that there are materials out there like Ninja Flex Cheetah and Armadillo that are a little bit easier to print than your bog standard TPU, but they're really expensive too. I buy a lot of the cheap stuff I find online and it does okay when you dry it for a while so bonus points if you do have a dryer if you don't i might hang off on printing tpu for a little bit because these failures can be common we also find that less extruder pressure is better than more although it will absolutely vary for your particular use case for us we take the standard extruder pressure that we do with the prusas which we have a little formula for doing it but i literally just do one turn backwards and that is exactly where the tpu likes to print best we can print it at the same extruder pressure but we find that sometimes it can bunch up when we give it a little bit less tension it seems to be a lot happier but your mileage may vary it will not be the same for you that it is for me so go ahead and try and it's why i buy cheap tpu because when it does crap like this i'm only pissed off because i've wasted a bunch of time and it's not because I'm burning 60 to $80 a kilo filament. It sucks. There's no good way to solve it. This is just pull the TPU until it isn't all damaged like you see it. And hopefully you don't end up with another extruder full of mom's spaghetti. And now we have to have a talk. About bamboo, we're talking about bamboo again. Some of you will know this about me, others may not, but I do my best to make sure that the service and warranty support that we get is the same as an average user. Because if we are getting special support because we have a YouTube channel, that's not okay. Because that means that we are showing things that the average person cannot get. Joel Telling experienced this firsthand when he reached out to bamboo to get uh, new AMSs because his were having problems. They sent him brand new AMSs, things that the average user doesn't have the ability to do. And there were a lot of comments that were calling out saying, I have the same problem and Bamboo is refusing to help me. It is ridiculous that you get that kind of support. I have been a bit of a stickler for making sure that I can get the regular base support. And to be clear, that is not to poo poo on Joel love Joel, love David, love everybody at 3D Printing Nerd, but that is just a case where I don't think they realized that they were getting, you know, special support, and it sucks because I get it, right? In one regard, like, I've worked this hard, I should get special support, but at the same time, we don't want to present something that isn't going to be the same thing that other people might have. So with that set up, let's talk about what's going on with my bamboo. It is destroying micro SD cards. Every four to six prints, it ruins a card. In fact, I, I have a whole bag full of dead, like flash memory. There are some regular SD cards, a couple of USB thumb drives in here, but there is a stack of micro SD cards and they are all trash. They do not read on a Windows PC, a Mac, or even Linux. The bamboo doesn't pick them up. The cards are absolutely trashed. And most recently, it was a pretty nice 64 gig card. I reached out to bamboo about a week ago to try and get this thing solved. Ultimately, this is a warranty issue. It shouldn't be doing this. And, uh, you know, hey, that's what warranties are for. They requested a log file, which under penalty of federal law, I cannot provide. For those that don't know, we don't know what's in those log files. Our company does deal with sensitive data. Because of that, we must quarantine the machine indefinitely. There is no way for us to put it onto another network because we don't know what is in those log files. They are AES encrypted and they are encrypted on chip. So there is no way for us to even intercept that signal before it is encrypted. We must be able to crack the encryption. So if you happen to like cracking AES encryption, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to provide you with some older log files with machine serial numbers and maybe some newer ones from before this machine was ever put on a network where you might be able to see what you can find. We have some ideas, but we're not 100% certain just yet. But anyways, I said I can't do that. 
And they said, well, they're bound by their warranty replacement agreement, which requires us to confirm or verify parts are bad before providing a replacement. Unfortunately, without proper verification, we cannot proceed with providing replacement parts for this issue. Unlocking the log files only authorized by our R&D team. And further down, the information is not viewed by anyone except the person reading the error logs, which would make sense because if you're not reading the error log, why would you be viewing it? But that doesn't tell me who is reading the error logs and why. I need to better understand who is having access to this data because Bamboo is utilizing the same type of chips that are inside of DJI drones. DJI is banned from doing business with the US government for national security reasons. So I have to look at this as well and understand that there are some potential problems. They say the information regarding what is being printed is of no concern. If it was of no concern, then why are you not letting me see my user data? I totally understand that Bamboo has some secret sauce that they want to keep secret. And in fact, I wholeheartedly support it. There's no reason that Bamboo should be able to show me everything what's on those log files, but I have a right to know what information of mine that is being sent that could be a problem, especially when it comes to non-disclosure agreements and ITAR. And while I recognize that the average user doesn't have to deal with ITAR, the average user will have to deal with things that they want to keep secret. If we can't validate the security of said secrets, are they really secret anymore? So I said, okay, fine. You can't help me take the printer back. I don't want it anymore. I've run out of options and I refuse to spend money to continually just put SD cards into this machine that are going to fail. With that being said, we are doing a test right now with a high endurance card that I just bought brand new from Samsung. With all the recordings that these machines do, it is possible that we're burning out the write cycles of these micro SD cards and they might be getting hot at the same time. So we'll see if this one is any better, but only having it for a couple of days. I don't know yet. We'll update you guys next week if anything changes. But here's where things get interesting. Staff member replies back saying, thank you for reply. My apologies for upsetting you. That was not my intention. I see you on our list of KOL customers. Let me get someone from that department to assist you. KOL from my understanding means key opinion leader. That means that they have a dedicated department for influencers, right? Content creators, YouTubers, whomever. Then I get a reply from the customer support manager at Bamboo Lab saying, yeah, uh, the person that I was talking to is completely wrong. Here are the steps you need to do. You don't need to give us a log file. And if it is what we think it is, we're going to send you a brand new screen and cable. But see, the problem is if I was just the average Joe, that is refusing to send a company with questionable data tactics already, my personal information, then I would be stuck with a $1,600 brick again. And while it can print, I just have to know that I'm going to destroy SD cards. So I have to just buy cheap ones in bulk, I guess. Either the card's gonna die or the printer's gonna kill it. And if you buy the really cheap ones, honestly, it's crapshoot for which happens faster. I'm kind of done. I am not gonna be accepting the screen. It is not what the average user would have got because the average user is not a key opinion leader. It's kind of known that companies provide extra support to content creators, right? They want content creators to have a good experience, but I want the same experience that you guys, the fan base, whether it's people that love the channel or love to hate us, this doesn't sit well with me because all of the sudden, because I have a YouTube channel, I am now getting preferential treatment and being treated completely differently. Now, again, if the staff member was giving me bad information and was requesting things that weren't supposed to be requested, it doesn't matter because until they realized that we have a YouTube channel, we had hit an impasse where it just wasn't possible. I provided the videos they had asked for, including the ticket number. Not the first time I've had to do that for them. If you guys will remember, we did that a little bit ago. Card to it so you can take a look. And it's funny because my previous experience with Bamboo customer support was amazing. I had that camera problem and I had a new camera in a couple of days and it's working great. So this kind of leaves me a little bit upset because it proves that there is a dedicated department for key opinion leaders, or at least I think that's what KOL means. If it doesn't, someone please correct me in the comments. But it also means that had I not had a YouTube channel, we would have met an impasse and this machine would just be destroying memory cards over and over. And again, before you tell me to put it on the network, I cannot do that. It is not legal. It must stay in quarantine indefinitely until we can see what is on those log files. We've reached out to Bamboo to just understand what personal information is being sent in those log files. But we have not received 
any communication back as of recording this video. We are still attempting those communications because if we can see it and I can send them an old log file and they can show me what personal data is being sent, I have some idea to at least feel a little bit better because I want to recommend these printers. And while I have had a rough experience, I know a lot of people haven't. I want to recommend Bamboo because I think that they're really shaking up the industry in a way that it's kind of needed it for a while now. But if I have interactions like this with support, I know that the rest of you might have similar ones. For that reason, I still can't recommend it. So where does that leave me in this machine? It means that I'm still currently testing it, but at this time, I want to box it up and send it back. It's not meeting my expectations. It's not meeting the advertisements that Bamboo is placing on it. And it is certainly not meeting uh, pretty much the expectations of all the haters that say that I'm the problem. I'm not the, I have 52 other machines that give me no problems, including Enders. It's just that one machine. So unless I'm losing brain cells every time I'm opening up the slicer softwares, then it's not a me thing. I don't know what to think about this one, guys. And I am still actually crafting a response as we speak to Bamboo, which is along the lines of, I'm sorry, but this doesn't work for me. I don't want preferential treatment. I want to be treated like every other customer because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for this YouTube channel, I would be every other customer. And to give me preferential treatment because of the YouTube channel is wrong. I did my best to provide them with everything that they needed. And uh, unfortunately, it's just not working. Anyways, guys, that's all we have for you today on this episode of Print Fix Friday. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Hey, don't forget to leave a like. Take care. Mike, check, Mike, check, 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 check out this cat. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank goes out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 here and higher. Remember, if you want to support the efforts that we do here, you can do so by clicking those links in that description and joining for as little as $1 a month. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can see print fails and how we fix them. Right next to that will be my six month review of my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which uh, based on what you guys can see today has gone exactly the same as things are currently going. Although it is running a little bit better, but support is still a problem. I will see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.